Welcome everyone. In this video, we are in the Great League showcasing another very powerful team featuring Sableye. Sableye, the safe swap on a classic core combination. Sableye and Bastiodon in the Great League, about as old as it gets. Traditionally with Medi in the back, but in for Medi is uh, this new Pokemon. I don't know if you've heard about it or, or, or understand what it is. It's called Annihilate, but... <laughs> Yeah, I'll annihilate and for Medi, I had to run this thing. It's the real deal for sure. And rounding out the team, as I mentioned, Basti on the lead to protect our two Pokemon in the back from fairies and flyers in the Great League. And hopefully you guys are taking full advantage of this current event where Sableye is out in the wild. Hopefully you can get those XLs, but here we go. Nightmare lead, Alolan Sandslash. It's a non-shadow, but still not the best for Bastiodon. Gonna just come in with our Sableye, and they allow us to get off this foul play. That is phenomenal. They shield, bank a ton of energy, and pivot into an Azumarill here, so... This team, quite familiar uh, by now. It was quite popular um, for a couple of seasons and uh, making a resurgence this season. It's A slash Azumarill Core, traditionally with Metacham, but we know Metacham has seen better days. The uh, popular, th most popular third option now is Sableye. But we don't throw the foul play there. That was intentional. I want more farm on Bastiodon. I know Bastiodon with energy can threaten an Alolan Sandslash, of course, with a double super effective flamethrower. And I was willing to bet that this Azumarill was not running Hydro Pump. It is not, so that is beautiful. We can go for this full farm down. Hold on to the shield advantage that we have for our Annihilate here. And we're not gonna throw the move. We're gonna go right into Annihilate, get some counter damage in on this thing. We do survive one of any move. Again, Annihilate can uh, actually tank damage pretty well. There's the Sableye right on cue. So the team read was spot on, right on point. And now we're just gonna go for the Shadow Ball. So I wanted to tank that damage because I intend to close this out with Basti of all Pokemon. They try to get a little cute there to allow us to get them low enough, uh, even lower. But that's okay. That's brilliant. We're going to let this go. We didn't want to tank that uh, Shadow Claw damage anyways um, during our farm down attempt. So that's beautiful. Them trying to get a little cute there uh, worked to our advantage. So I'm going to go for the Flamethrower here. And I think we've got this in the bag. We've got two shields for Basti. And uh, just going to shield everything. Get to this Flamethrower. And that will be all she wrote for this Mon for Mon RPS line. They know what's up. They don't want to see their fate play out, and that's going to be a good game. Yeah, in light of this event going on right now with Sableye out in the wild, I thought I'd show you guys what Sableye can do. And here we go. Uh, Guzzlord. Speaking of Sableye, we want to keep it far and away from this thing right here. This is a good lead for us. Of course, uh, it does run Dragon Tail. Any Pokemon running a Dragon type fast move is generally not going to do well against Bastiodon, if you can imagine. So, we're just going to play this out. It looks like their core broken by a Bastiodon here, so not really sure what they could have in the back. This is a fairly unconventional lead here, but as you can see, they're happy to just stay in here and soft lose lead, which is a dead ringer for a core broken team comp here we're just going to do our thing here smack down it down they've got a lantern running water gun going to instantly pivot into sableye and there it is that is what was hiding from our bestie they've got a charge bug in the back and um we're gonna look to play this out go for a foul play they do let that go as they do survive one move from sableye and we're gonna let their move go and uh, hold on and maintain the shield advantage here. Now, what I'd like to do is get to back to back. If we can't do that, we'll just play to a simul. We do play to the simul. And now it's all up to Annihilate here to take out this Lantern. I think we'll do quite all right in the twos here. We do have to bait. This is a bait dependent matchup, so that's what we're gonna play to. I don't know if the opponent knows that or not. But I do know that they know that we hit like an absolute truck and they may not want to have to tank a Shadow Ball even though they do survive it. They know that our Basti is relatively healthy so that we are grabbing shields with the bait. Baiting with the Ice Punch, a little risky, but um, I think I was quite confident that we would grab those shields from them. Gonna bait again, you do have to bait to get those shields down. And if they shield this, 
I don't even think we'll need to land a shadow ball. We're very close to a stone edge here. It's in stone edge range. Gonna throw Basti in to finish this thing off here. We will survive a surf, no problem. We got the smack down through and Basti comes in to close it out. Would you believe we are saying bye-bye to the lantern courtesy of Bastiodon of all Pokemon. Go figure. Good game to them. Oh, the Sableye Annihilate Basti team was absolutely putting in work. And here we go. Another A Slash. Holy smokes. We're going to pivot into our Sableye just as we did with the other A Slash lead. This time they meet us with a Whimsicott. So very interesting to have behind a Lowland Sand Slash. Very weak to a fire type. Um, yeah, that's insane. Um, Maybe they're, maybe this is someone who decided to bring their Fantasy Cup team into the Open Great League, but I'm sure the minute they encounter a Talonflame or a Skelet Urge, they'll be rethinking that. But I digress. We play out the zeros, uh, or no, they shielded uh, our return. So um, we uh, hold on to our shields just as we did in the other um, A Slash matchup there previously and we are going to look to uh, farm this whimsicott all the way down i don't know what could be in the back uh, you don't generally see whimsicott behind an a slash and it's an azumarill so yeah this is looking like a fantasy cup team someone uh, had a brilliant idea to bring their fantasy cup team into the open great league you'll love to see it um uh yeah so the question is is this thing running hydro pump that's what they'll need to ko us so it'll be interesting to see. We're happy to let this go and put the hope and faith into Annihilate Papa Shield. Um, perhaps they're not running Hydro Pump as they hit us with a play rough there. Gonna go for another Stone Edge and put the pressure on this Azumarill. They let that go. It's Annihilate time. Uh, so yeah, we will shield everything from the Azumarill and the Whimsicott is just about done as well. They go play rough there. So very interesting. Um... Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. They are playing games here. Uh, we're just going to look to get rid of the Azumarill here with an Ice Punch. That's all we needed. And now it is looking pretty good here. We've played this very well so far, managing um, the matchups quite well, I, I must say. Uh, they do come in with the A Slash uh, to meet its demise. So very interesting. The uh, Whimsicott's still pretty healthy. But our switch clock is coming up here pretty soon. So we're going to go for the Ice Punch and look to pressure that final shield or KO. They do shield, so now we bring back in Basti. Keep an eye on that switch clock. They Shadow Claws down, and uh, yeah, we are just a couple of counters off from a move. But we don't even make it as uh, we delete that thing with our counter fast with pressure. Another nightmare team comp for us. We are left standing in the end. Good game to them. I always say the hallmark of a strong team is the ability to play your way out of a RPS uh, team comp that you find yourself faced against. But here we go. Dragonair lead. This is fine for us here. Now, uh, if Dragonair chooses the shield and we choose to no shield, we will lose this. So that is okay. I'm fine with a uh, soft losing lead here because I know that our back two Pokemon both perform tremendously uh, with a shield advantage and Dragonair absolutely has to shield on the lead. So the name of the game with these d leads is uh, they shield at all costs to control alignment, but that's fine. I know, I know how they have to play this and I'm fine taking those shields from them. So we're not shielding, we're gonna soft lose lead here and look to come in with our Sableye and look to farm this thing all the way down. Um, brilliant timing by them and they are running body slam so perhaps they have still have frustration on this dragon air I don't know but uh, you definitely want to be going aqua tail in those situations and they've got a licky tongue here so what we're gonna do is chip this thing it's not likely they shield they are already down a shield they let that go and now it's time for annihilate here to come in and get some very nice counter damage in on this licky tongue here Gonna shield this. I don't know what else they could have in the back. A healthy Annihilate could be um, helpful. But uh, yeah, uh, it's an Azumarill. So uh, what we're gonna do, go for the Shadow Ball, of course. It would be far too risky at this health range to bait with an Ice Punch, and they do let that go as they do survive. I wanna pressure that final shield here. So we are gonna shield up 
whatever they throw here, it is the super effective play ref, and we're going to look to pressure them and uh, try and grab that final shield with the shadow ball here. They're going to have to throw another move here. Um, they can't really afford to over farm by too much here. And the resistant counters are actually adding up. They do decide to throw here, and that is absolutely fine. So... What I'm going to look to do here is put the hope and faith all on the Sableye. The Shadow Claws have now chipped this within foul play range. I'm going to abandon timing just to get rid of the Azumarill. I don't want to risk um, any shenanigans here. Down goes the Azumarill. In comes the Shiny Licky, and Sableye has put the team on its back. I wasn't sure if this was going to KO, but I was quite um, confident that it would. Um, but yeah, down goes the shiny Licky. Sableye coming in clutch to absolutely close the game strong. You'd love to see it. Good game to them. Yeah, it just made perfect sense to just simply swap out Metacham for Annihilate on this line, and uh, it definitely worked out. Here we go. Umbreon, this is exactly where you want to see it if you've got two ghost types in the back. And uh, this is a pretty positive matchup for Bastiodon. Umbreon, of course, can hold its own. It definitely hangs in there. But Basti uh, just sort of outbulks Umbreon, which is absolutely insane to hear yourself say out loud. <laughs> That is just the nature of Bastiodon in the Great League. So not the most thrilling matchup. Um, we are just uh, two bulky Pokemon um, throwing moves that don't do very much damage until one is gone. That is basically how this matchup plays out. But we want to be careful to not play to any CMP ties that we do not win. We are just constantly going for the extra. Waiting a turn just uh, to prevent any crazy catch attempt by the opponent. I want this Umbreon on to take this damage and uh yeah we can just uh, smack down this thing down from this point on they are just happy to just lose lead here so perhaps weak to a basti in the back not quite sure that's usually a good indicator when they stand on a lead loss no not well perhaps yeah um yeah oh my goodness yes they were weak to a basti in the back holy smokes they were running town flame. We lag a turn there, so we don't get our move off, which is unfortunate, but that is okay. I'm gonna shield this and try and get rid of this talon flame. Our Basti is um might still be healthy enough to handle this thing if we can get some damage in on it, but uh, I kind of want to get rid of this thing to avoid it um, getting on to our annihilate in the back. And we are well, we are quite a, quite a bit ahead on energy here. Looks like they're getting greedy going for a farm down. Holy smokes. But rank one Sableye's got something to say about that. Makes the final foul play. And it just doesn't quite KO. That is unfortunate. And they are going to throw a move to pre prevent the SmackDown taking them out. I'm not willing to shield this. I want to hold on to the shield advantage and put the hope and faith into Annihilate. Guys, this thing is the real deal. Could have easily been on the thumbnail, but I know everyone under the sun has got Annihilate on the thumbnail, so we put Sableye on because Sableye is, um, its stock has never been better, but that's all beside the point. We're doing big damage on the tanky Whiskash, countering it down and countering down the flaming bird of terror, Annihilate, taking over the game, closing in dominant fashion. You love to see a good game to them. I'm telling you, people have already caught on and are already building triple counter uh, teams for Annihilate. There we go. We had a Frostlass. That's a good lead for us. They safe swap Drapion, and Frostlass is not a great matchup for our Annihilate here, so we're going to put it here onto this Drapion. We do tank a crunch, as you can see. Um, the stat product is a bit deceiving on this thing, guys. This thing uh, can tank damage, and that's due to its HP stat. Has a very nice HP stat um, for GBL. And uh, they do let our Ice Punch go. What we're going to look to do is go for a counter down here and leave with absolutely loaded energy to put the pressure on the Frostlass that may come back in here on us. Um, it should, of course, knowing that we have a Basti, and they do. And now we're going to fire off the Shadow Ball and either one-shot this thing or even up the shielding scenario here. They uh, do decide to shield and looks like going for an aggressive farm down. That's okay. That energy will not go too far up against our Basti here. 
That's the, as we all know, of course, tags damage for days. Not sure what else they could have in the back, though. So, oh, it's a jealous hit. Holy smokes. I'm telling you, people already building triple counter teams for Annihilate. Holy smokes. How did that work out? What what happened, friend? Um, yeah, uh, this is over. So yeah, even if they have a triple counter team for Annihilate, you have to just place it on the right spot on that team, and that's what we did here. We one-shot that Jelly. We will go for another foul play here. If they want to shield this, by all means, we've got a Basti lurking, but no, they do let it go. So yeah, that's what happened to the triple counter to Annihilate team, guys. You just have to place it in the right spot. Take advantage of what they give you, and that's what we did. Good game to them. Yeah, knowledge of matchups is we got that one done uh, in that previous one. But here we go, Azumra lead. So the question is, again, are there any Hydro Pump holdovers from the Fantasy Cup? It looks like that may be the case as they do safe swap a G-Fisk. Gonna put our Annihilate here onto the G-Fisk as um, it has the least favorable matchup up against an Azumarill here on this team. I would say overall. And that's just because it's resisting our fast move pressure. Um, but we're going to go for an ice punch. I think this should just about KO. Oh, but they hang on. Holy smokes. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. We're going to have to shield. Uh, I just don't know what they could have in the back. It could be a Trevenant. And if that is the case, I would want Sableye on that. So we do shield to control alignment there. Going to go for a Shadow Ball here. They can let this go. It does survive, but they shield. Very interesting shield by them. So uh, going to come in with Basti here. Seeing that uh, Insta Swap leads me to believe that perhaps they're not running Hydro Pump, but they did build up to it. We're going to let this go. Even if they are, we do survive. And uh, they are running Hydro Pump. So we've got a Hydro Pump holdover. <laughs> That's what I'm calling them from uh, the Fantasy Cup. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we're just going to go for the Stone Edge here and um, put the hope and faith in the Sableye. I'm not going to shield anything um, from this Azumarill here. They're going to need Hydro Pump, another one to KO, and that is a massive energy commitment, and they do go right for it. And they've got a Reggie in the back, so this is looking like perhaps another Fantasy Cup team um, that somebody brought into the Open Great League. This one actually a little bit better than the other Fantasy Cup team that we saw here. So this is going to come down to if they get the lucky attack drop. If they do, it's not looking too good. Oh, they do. Ah, I was, uh, I was uh, hoping that was not the case because now uh, our Shadow Claw fast move is doing less damage. We would have been able to farm this thing down and leave with load and energy. But because they got the very lucky attack drop, that does not occur. And we let this go because there is no hope. So that one came down to the RNG. It did not work out in our favor. Good game to them. Yeah, this updated... Um, Take on a classic pairing worked out beautifully. And here we go. Up against member of my Discord, Bamo Eagle. Shouts to you, my friend. But uh, yeah, this toxic D Nair lead literally ran up against a brick wall here on the lead. But I, I know the name of the game of these D Nair leads. They have to go down on shields. So that's what we're going to play to. If the Denair chooses to shield, and we do not, we will not win with Bastion on. Um, and that is okay. I'm absolutely fine with that. I will take the shield advantage and just uh, soft lose lead here up against this Denair. That is absolutely fine. Denair um, traditionally has a Bastion on of its own in the back, some sort of steel tape to protect it from the Charmers and Ice types. Um, these days, it could be a Skarmory as well. I've been seeing that quite a bit. We're just going to come in with Sableye and Fully Shadow Claw down. We've got the shield advantage and we've got the energy lead. We'll take that. There's the Skarm. That's the steel type uh, that has to be behind a Denier. If it's a balanced and um, sensible team comp, that is. I have seen some with uh, two fairies in the back, which is insane. But that's all beside the point. Sableye's unleashing upon this Skarmory here. Going for foul play number two. Just about taking out the Skarmory. And we could let this go, but I was, really wasn't sure what was in the back. Um, it happens to be a Lantern, which you can see as well. Uh, Denair, Lantern, Skarm. You can also see it with Whiskash in the place of uh, Lantern. 
So we just chip and dip into our uh, Annihilate here, and I think this is pretty good for us. We tank one of any move, so we're going to let this go. Um, it would be nice if it were the Surf. It is the Surf, so that's obviously doing less damage. And Annihilate has a pretty decent HP stat, which means that it tanks fast move pressure very, very well. Long enough to do things like this. Counter all the way down. And we leave with back to back to hit the Skarm with. If uh, if uh, my old pal Bamo Eagle from my Discord wants the shield, by all means. But no, he recognizes it was over. Good game to you, my friend. And uh, yeah, good game, well played. Oh man, yeah, I think it was a very very good call pairing Annihilate with Basti and Sableye. It works out beautifully. And here we go. Chris Elliot lead. That's a good lead for us. They safe swap a Licky, and this is a tricky one to deal with here. We get some uh, lag there, but we're, it, it looks like it's catching us up there. So uh, uh, no, no big deal there. We are caught up. And what we're going to look to do is tank this and bank that energy. Get a little bit of SmackDown fast food pressure in to make this matchup a little bit better here for us. Going to let this go. It is a body slam, and that is okay. Um, that's beautiful. That is resisted, of course, with our ghost typing. And we're going to look to take them out before they can get to another move here and not have to expend any shields. They do let that go. Down goes the shiny Licky. In comes the Chrysalia. And we did over farm, so now we are going to look to really put some heavy pressure on this Chrysalia. It's not going to be fun having to tank a Shadow Ball from an Annihilate, and they do shield out of caution. It would not have one-shot, but it would have been doing tremendous damage to this Grisalia, of course. We're going to let this go and hold on to this shield advantage. Look to come in with our Basti here. It'll be interesting to see what they have in the back. And they've got a G-Fisk in the back, so very interesting. A little slow on the swap there, um, but that's okay. Um, our, I, what I was doing was debating if I should throw that flamethrower onto that G-Fisk. Uh, uh, it took a little too long to think there, but we do successfully call the rock slide bait. I was fine tanking an EQ as well. We do survive that. Uh, they just go, uh, they're going straight rock slide here, and that is beautiful. Um, works to our advantage. Going to go for the foul play as we are capped out on energy here. Of course, it doesn't KO, but it does some meaningful neutral damage. And we will go for foul play number two on CMP tie. So we uh, threw on four of their mud shots. The fifth one always sneaks through, and if you know you have back to back, that's how you can. Um, deny them and uh play to that cmp tie but we are going to pivot into basti i will now throw this flamethrower after grabbing both shields we say bye bye to the g fisk and uh this is looking pretty good here our sableye is still very much healthy enough to handle a chrysalia if this goes south but that is highly unlikely as bastion thoroughly shuts down chrysalia they realize that and they top left so that's going to be yet another good game well played so yeah, again, by now, hopefully you see the power of this uh, Sableye Annihilate team here, uh, but not with a lead like that. Holy smokes, had a G-Fisk lead, and we pivot into Sableye. They meet us with a Shinotic. Shinotic. I hope I'm pronouncing that well. We're going to full sin this return. No baiting here, and holy smokes, we do massive damage, and that is brilliant. Holy smokes, they tried to call a bait. I don't know. Or maybe they... Um, thought that that wouldn't do that much but we shield we've got alignment they top left they want no part of that holy smoke so yeah a bit premature i would say but i don't know what they had in the back perhaps you know who knows could have been anything with a shenotic behind a chiefess good game to them nonetheless and that is the team my friends so yeah Really wanted to run Annihilate. I really wasn't sure what to run it with, and I knew that um, there's a very strong team comp that has withstood the test of time season after season. It was none other than Basti, Medi, Sableye, but I didn't want to run Medi. I wanted to run Annihilate, so it made perfect sense just to put Medi off to the side, put it on the bench, and pop Annihilate right in. And it fit like a glove into this team comp. It was brilliant. Basti protects our back two Pokemon, of course, from Charmers, Flyers, and uh, the back two protect uh, Basti from fighting types. It's a beautiful team comp that worked out beautifully. And uh, as we saw in this video, it put in tremendous work in the Great League. But guys, I had a blast. 
I hope you all enjoyed. As always, I thank you for watching and keep up the grind. Thank you guys.